to fall. At Lake Stymphalus, Hercules meets some men from the small town near there. Please help us, Hercules, they say. There are huge birds in the tall trees next to the lake. They have metal feathers. From time to time, they leave the trees for the sky. And then they drop their feathers down on our cows and kill them. Hercules looks up just then and sees hundreds of birds in the sky over his head. The birds suddenly begin to drop their metal feathers down on him. But the feathers can't go through Hercules' lion skin. He shoots lots of arrows at the birds, but they quickly fly away up into the tops of the tall trees again. I can't shoot them up there, thinks Hercules. Athena, where are you? I need help. Just then, Athena arrives with a large metal rattle in her hand. You can make a big noise with this, she says. Those birds don't like a lot of noise, you see. And with that, she gives the rattle to Hercules. Hercules puts the rattle up over his head and moves it left and right again and again. It makes a lot of noise. Suddenly, the birds fly down out of the trees. Hercules can then easily shoot and kill them with his arrows. Hercules goes back to the palace. Eurystheus! I have a bird from Lake Stymphalus for you, he calls. And he puts the dead bird down, not far from Eurystheus's jar. Let's see, says Eurystheus. And he comes out of his jar. He goes over and looks at the dead bird. And he cuts his hand on one of its metal feathers. Hercules, get out of here, cries the king angrily. For task number seven, you must go at once to Crete and catch King Minos's white bull there and be quick about it. Hercules goes by boat to Crete. When he arrives there, King Minos is very happy to see him. Oh, there's a big white bull, he says. It's running here and there and killing people everywhere. You're big and strong, Hercules. Please, catch it and take it away. It's in a small town near here now. Hercules goes to the town and waits. It is very quiet there and nobody is on the streets. Suddenly, the bull comes out from behind a tree and it runs towards Hercules. The bull has big horns and fire is coming out of its mouth. The bull comes nearer and nearer to Hercules. But the fire doesn't burn him because he's wearing his lion skin. Hercules takes the bull by the horns and gets up on its back. For two days, the bull runs all over Crete. Hercules stays on its back day and night. In the end, the bull is very tired and it can't run or fight anymore. Hercules quickly puts the bull on his boat and takes it back to King Eurystheus. Eurystheus is very afraid of the bull. I don't want that thing in my home. Kill it at once, he cries from his jar. But Hercules opens the palace door and the bull runs away. That night, Eurystheus 
talks to the goddess Hera. Hercules does all our tasks very easily, he says. What can we find for him to do next? Hera thinks for a minute. Then she smiles. I know, she cries, and she says something quietly in the king's ear. Oh, yes. <laughs> he laughs. That's good. That's very good. The next morning, Eurystheus calls for Hercules. When Hercules arrives, the king is sitting in his big metal chair. Hercules, he says, task number eight is to bring back the horses from the palace of King Diomedes. Of course, smiles Hercules, and he walks quickly out of the palace. And don't forget, begins Hera, and she looks out from behind Eurystheus's chair. Diomedes' horses eat people. <laughs> <laughs> then she and Eurystheus begin to laugh and laugh. But Hercules is far away from them now, and he doesn't hear. Hercules goes by boat to the palace of King Diomedes with four of his friends. We're tired, hungry, and far from home, they say to the king when they arrive at his door. Come in, says King Diomedes. You can eat with us this evening and stay here tonight. He looks at the men's big, strong bodies and he thinks, I can give them to my hungry horses tomorrow. That evening, Hercules hears King Diomedes talk quietly to one of his men. When Hercules and his friends are sleeping tonight, you must help me to kill them, the king says to the man. They can be a nice breakfast for my horses. Hercules says nothing, but later he talks to his friends. They want to kill us tonight. We can't go to sleep. We must wait for them and fight them when they come for us. That night, Hercules' friends go to sleep very quickly. But Hercules cannot sleep. Suddenly, King Diomedes and his men come into the room. Quick! Get out of bed! cries Hercules to his friends. They get up, fight, and kill the king and his men. What shall we do with the dead bodies, Hercules? ask his friends. Give them to the horses, of course, he answers. The horses are very quiet and happy after they eat Diomedes and his men. When Hercules brings the horses back to Eurystheus' palace, they look hungrily at the king. Take those horses away, cries Eurystheus. He runs into the garden and goes behind a tree. When Hercules comes back without the horses, Princess Admete is talking to her father. Queen Hippolyta of the Amazons has a beautiful golden belt, she says. And I want it. Well, that's your next task, Hercules, says Eurystheus from behind the tree. Task number nine. Get Queen Hippolyta's belt and bring it back for my daughter, 